from the University of Laverne. This is Foothill Community News. Hello and welcome to another edition of Foothill Community News. From the University of Laverne, I'm Olivia Mottarelli. And I'm Nate Rodriguez. The holiday season is here and if you're worried about inflation bumping up gift prices, don't be. Shoppers will find more items on sale this holiday season compared to the past two years. Reporter Taylor Moore has tips on how to make the most out of holiday shopping. Black Friday sales, which usually start the day after Thanksgiving, started early this year. Experts say that the fourth quarter is very important for retailers, and getting ahead of the competition is crucial. This means that retailers are willing to mark down prices earlier to draw on those customers. This year, Target kicked off their Black Friday sales nearly seven weeks before Thanksgiving and three weeks earlier than last year. Reuters says in their annual retail forecast that holiday sales are expected to rise 4 to 6 percent this year. It's not just about Black Friday anymore, folks. The sales are already here. And if you want to save money for this holiday, here's what you need to know. Experts advise shoppers to get a head start on their holiday shopping to take advantage of the early sales. But staying organized is helpful, too. Target shopper Nicole Garcia says she got a head start on her holiday shopping thanks to a detailed list. I make a list from mom's side and dad's side. So I start with the oldest and then work my way to the bottom to the younger kids. If the stress of crowded shopping is adding to the stress of spending money, online shopping might be the way to go especially with the discounts and coupons available. Shopper Samantha Leyland says she shops in person occasionally, but does most of it online. I'm gonna start buying things online. You know, I don't have to like go out of my way. It's easier with work, you know, cause I don't have time. Sales are expected to last through December with some even leaking into January. Another tip, save your receipts. Some retailers like Target will match your Black Friday deal on anything bought between October 6th and December 24th. If the price has dropped, they'll refund the difference. Reporting for Foothill Community News, I'm Taylor Moore. The holiday season is also the time of year for back-to-back -back breaks on college campuses. Unfortunately, it may leave some students without easy access to food. I talked with students here at the University of Laverne to find out how they were feeling. For students who stay on campus over the holidays, finding a hot meal may not be so easy. This is because the two campus dining options, Barbara's Place and The Spot, have limited dining hours over campus breaks. Both dining halls were closed for Thanksgiving break and they will be closed for much of the upcoming winter break in December. This lack of accessibility to meals contributes to student food insecurity, especially for students who can't go home for reasons like work or travel expenses. I, mean, I know some people think that just because we have restaurants in the area that it's, it should be fine, that we're not going to starve. However, most people don't like have enough money to go out and just buy their own food every day. Senior Alex Medina works as a game management assistant and has to stay on campus to work games. In my case, like if there is work, yeah, I kind of have to stay for a bit. This leaves students to either spend money buying food off campus or limit their food intake if they don't have that money to spend. I'm actually from out of state, um, so it doesn't really make sense for me to buy a plane ticket if I'm just gonna be there for a couple days. Meal plans are required for those living on campus some costing upwards of $3,000. But Chief Student Affairs Officer Juan Regalado says the amount of labor and resources required to keep a dining hall open is significant in comparison to the small portion of students who stay on campus during breaks. However, last year, nearly half stayed on campus during break. So with the demand not being there, we have to look at other options instead of keeping the dining hall uh, available and open. One of those options is the Leo Food Pantry. Allison Creek, who helps run the pantry, says that there are 125 to 150 students that use the pantry each month. They can input any dietary restrictions they may have, um, and once a month, they'll be able to pick the bag up. This year, the university also offered free Thanksgiving meals to students who were stuck on campus and to those who wanted to share the food with their family. While these free holiday meals help students through Thanksgiving, those staying on campus will have to find other meal options during winter break. For help getting around town, public transportation is the best option for many people. However, a recent survey found that for women riders, it may be a dangerous experience. Reporter Megan Mojica tells us why. According to a survey released by LA Metro, women's ridership has decreased significantly since 2019. 
with over 50% of women citing safety as an issue. Here, most of the time, I have to look around my surroundings. Ridership by women fell by 4% on buses and 2% on trains. Although that number may seem low, it has had a big impact on female riders. Train rider Dorian says although she has never been assaulted at a metro station, she knows other women who have, and that raises safety concerns for her. It's really spooky. You know, I, I, I won't leave the house without my pepper spray. The data was collected between March and May of this year from over 12,000 metro riders. Along with safety as a concern, riders also reported cleanliness and homelessness as a concern. Many riders said they wish there was a higher presence of metro policemen and that they handle these issues better. Again, I just wish that the security weren't just swaggering and just trying to power trip rather than like actually helping people. Um. Metro's chief communications officer, Monica Bolden, says they are addressing the safety issue on a number of levels. So we've put together this kind of multi-layered approach that includes both law enforcement and non-law law enforcement personnel to help our riders feel more safe and comfortable on the system. Metro has introduced an ambassador program, which has trained ambassadors to deal with a variety of customer service issues. They also have a transit watch app where people can report any experience issues. Metro says they are also planning to improve light at stations and install more security cameras to help people feel safe. They also have a homeless outreach program that will be expanding at the beginning of the year with more specialists. Reporting for Foothill Community News, I'm Megan Mojica. When we come back, an annual holiday tradition rolls into town. And we'll tell you what's going on around the town. Stay with us. We'll be right back. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man. The selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not OK to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man. Let's put a ride home. Thousands rolled into Old Town Laverne to display and admire their passion, cars. I was there to check out the annual Cruise in Laverne Holiday Car Show. From classic cars to Model Ts and everything in between, more than 300 cars lined the streets of Old Town Laverne last month for the annual Cruise in Laverne Holiday Car Show. I just love the classic cars. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of different shapes in the older cars and all the new cars kind of look the same. So it's fun to see how unique cars used to be. With 365 cars on display, there were not only unique vehicles, but unique stories. Hesperia resident Jay Winters bought his car in 1972 to drag race. Drove it off a used car lot for $2,500. It's an original Z28. He decided to restore it nearly 50 years later. Close the hood on this car. It's almost identical to the car I drove off the used car lot. But under the skin, it's all current technology, all the way down to electric power steering. Former University of Laverne professor Jim Skalicki proudly displayed his restored Ford Model T at the car show. I have a Model T, so I have a Model A and another Mustang and a couple cars and so I like to share them here. This is a great, great car show. I think it's one of the best and I've gone through quite a few. For Richard Hart, seeing the car brought back memories. This Model T reminded me a friend and I in high school bought one for ten dollars. The Laverne Canine and Police Foundation came out to raise money for their canine unit and the California Highway Patrol used the event to kick off its annual Chips for Kids toy drive. Uh, this is one of our main events that we do go to. We love going to this event. Every single year we, we raise more and more toys. Around 10,000 people showed up to admire the cars, but at the end of the day, the event was really all about the community. We didn't realize how many friends we have made. You can check out the next Cruise in Laverne car show on April 8th in Old Town Laverne. If you miss the car show, don't worry. There's plenty happening around the town this holiday season. The City of Laverne will be holding its 23rd annual Winter Wonderland at Heritage Park this month. Children can enjoy snow runs and snow play lands with real snow. They can visit with Santa and warm up with a cup of hot cocoa and a special treat from Mrs. Claus's Cozy Kitchen. Winter Wonderland takes place on December 10th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Tickets can be purchased in advance online for $13 or the day of the event for $15. 
The city of Claremont will be getting into the holiday spirit with the tradition of the Luminaria Nights. The California Botanic Garden will be lit up with luminarias and other light installations that guide guests through garden paths. It will also feature live musical performances from a variety of musical artists. The event takes place on Friday and Saturday, December 9th and 10th, and December 16th and 17th. You can purchase tickets online at calbg.org. The Hispanic tradition of Las Posadas will play out at the Padua Hills Theater in Claremont on December 15th. The event will feature a live performance from Cielo Rojo Dance Company, along with Mexican pastries and hot chocolate. Doors open at 6 p.m. Buy your tickets online on the Claremont Heritage website. If you're looking to give back this holiday season, the Laverne Fire Department's Spark of Love toy drive is underway. The fire department is accepting new and unwrapped toys, board games, and sports equipment for any age. Gifts can be dropped off through Christmas Day at any Laverne Fire Station, City Hall, or at designated boxes at the Winter Wonderland event. The toys will be given to Laverne families in need. If you'd like to receive a gift, sign a request form at www.lavernefire.org. You can help spread holiday cheer by volunteering to deliver goodie bags to Laverne residents on Christmas morning. The walk will take place from 6 a.m. until 2 p.m. to volunteer. Visit cityoflaverne.org. Volunteers must be able to walk for long periods of time. Coming up, we'll tell you about an unusual way some residents decided to celebrate Thanksgiving. We'll have that story, plus sports plays and game scores, when we come back. Did you get a call or message that mentioned Social Security that made you feel threatened or scared? That is not the Social Security Administration. Social Security will not threaten you, press you for personal information, or demand instant payment. Social Security does not accept payments by gift card, prepaid debit card, internet currency, or by mailing cash. Criminals use these forms of payment because they are hard to trace. Don't fall for it. Hang up, ignore them. Report this criminal activity to oig.ssa.gov. Reduced at U.S. taxpayer expense. You may have heard that the American Legion helps honor our fallen heroes. Or that the American Legion helped write the GI Bill, enabling veterans to get a college education. And yeah, you've heard us tell a good story or two. But did you know that the American Legion does so much more for our veterans? From advocacy on Capitol Hill to serving others in our communities, the American Legion continues its tradition of strengthening America through service. Learn more about supporting veterans in your community by visiting legion.org. We're back with sports reporter Sheridan Lambrook, who has our last sports update of the year. What's going on, Sheridan? Well, lots is happening right now. In local news, San Dimas alumna Ali Lemos is playing down to the wire in the Women's College Cup in Cary, North Carolina. The UCLA first-year midfielder was expected to be a member of the starting 11 in the Bruins' Final Four matchup against Alabama last Friday. San Dimas High School hosted its annual Gary Presta Sater Classic Boys Basketball Tournament last week. Fifteen teams juked it out in the house that Press built, where the legendary San Dimas coach and current assistant athletic director earned 500 career wins at the helm of Saints basketball. Keeping it on the court, the Classic at Damien will take place from December 26th through the 30th. The National Premier High School Tournament will feature some of the best high school talent in the country, playing in local gyms like Bonita, San Dimas High School, and more. You can find out more information online at classic at damien.org. University of Laverne sophomore Tay K. Beret represented the Leopards in the NCAA Division III Cross Country Championship in Lansing, Michigan. Beret finished 132 out of a group of 294 runners. That's a wrap for sports. Back to you. Thanks, Sheridan. They weren't your typical athletes, but that didn't stop hundreds of people who came to test their athletic abilities at the annual San Dimas Turkey Trot. Reporter George Martinez was there to give us a look at the event. Before diving into their Thanksgiving dinner, hundreds of people came out to Bonelli Park to test their endurance during the San Dimas Turkey Trot. Mike Rains, who came with his family, says the race was great. Uh, I feel good. I don't usually walk that much. I, I walk a lot of work, but... That was more, of, this was more of a little exercise type deal, so it was good, it was good, it felt good. Racers could sign up to run a 1K, 5K, and 10K that took them along a scenic run through Bonelli Park in San Dimas. 
Race coordinator and event director Tommy Struziri says the trot attracts people of all physical types. That means that kids sign up. That means that uh, a new athlete that you know might be trying to lose some weight or something like that might sign up for the race. And I think that's the most inspiring to me because it's 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 people that get out of their comfort zone and and you know are are really challenging their their bodies and their minds to to do something great. The race ended with the medal given to winners based on their age group and the fastest time. Racer Noel Davila, who is 32, finished first place in his age group and got the fastest time in his division, coming in at 20 minutes and 59 seconds. i never done the 5K before. I did the 5K this time. i done the 10K before. Uh, that was fun. Great course. I'm outside of Frank Bonelli Park, and this year's turkey trot here in San Dimas was great and successful. All ages were welcome, but people here aged from 5 years old to 60, and they all left with a free t-shirt and a free medal. I'm George Martinez. This is Full Hill Community News. That'll do for us. You can watch our newscast, including previous shows, at foothillcommunitynews.org and follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Foothill Community News. Thank you for tuning in for our final episode this season. Happy holidays, and we'll see you next year. Bye. Bye.